I'm Jane Marie, and this is DTR. When we started making this season of DTR, we asked listeners to write in if they wanted me to swipe for them. And we heard from over 600 people from all over the world. They were single and genuinely needed dating help. But this one guy, Scott, he caught our attention because he is one of the biggest mysteries we've ever encountered. At 34 years of age, I have never had a boyfriend. Uh, I've only dated a couple of guys, and it's not because I'm not looking for a relationship. It just hasn't worked out. My longest relationship was six weeks, and he swears that we were not boyfriends at the time. Uh, I'm pretty much lucky to get a third date, I would say. What's weird is there's no obvious reason for any of this. On paper, Scott is a catch. He's Ivy League educated. He's got a good job. He's well-traveled, super nice. He bench presses for fun. And in case you're wondering, he has a perfectly symmetrical face. Despite all that, he has never been able to find a boyfriend. You know, I'm going to embarrass myself, but I've Googled how to date as a gay man. And there are a couple of sites out there, there's suggestions, but there is no playbook for how to approach dating. And so I feel like, I don't know, maybe that's something I've missed out on. I haven't had social cues, like living in a gay culture and knowing how people date each other. Today on the show, we're making Scott a dating playbook of his own. But before we swipe for Scott, here's some background info on him. He's from North Carolina. He grew up in a really traditional family, like the kind where you can't have sex until you're married. And he hardly knew any gay people growing up. So I came out when I was 18 years old. My mom needed about a month to uh, understand what was going on. Then she joined PFLAG, so Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. Uh, And then she started a chapter years later. She's amazing. My dad, he needed more time, so he and I didn't speak for about six months. But now he's the biggest champion. He's asking me when I'm bringing a son-in-law home. I was in a situation where I wasn't ready to date when I came out. I was more exploring who I was. I moved around to New York. I lived on a cruise ship in Alaska. I went back to North Carolina, my hometown of Charlotte, before I went out to L.A. for seven years and now just recently moved to Seattle. Stay sitting down for a second. Just stay still. (laughs) Well, I think that's the problem. Scott swears he's putting roots down in Seattle. So before I officially find him some dates, I needed some help from someone who could shed light on dating as a gay man and help me create some techniques for the playbook we're making for Scott. I'm Gabe Liebman. I'm a comedian and a television writer. Mm, What do you write? I currently write for Broad City and Transparent, and I've been around the block and written for some other shows as well. So, like, no big deal. No big deal. I don't write for my favorite shows at all. Just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) They're my favorite shows. (laughs) Very proud. Very proud. Very proud. (laughs) For sure. Yeah. No, you should be. It's amazing. So you're here today to help us find love for someone. Uh, I can do it. Can you? Have you been Absolutely. able to do it for yourself? I I have. I have found love almost exclusively online. Whoa. Throughout my whole life. I don't think I've ever met someone in person. Really? And had success. Okay. Yeah. And married to a guy that I met on Twitter. Twitter. Which is That's not, not a dating app. <laughs> it is not a dating app. Well, kind of. You, but, you know, you anything's into, a dating app. Did you slide into his DMs or was it yeah. everywhere? Oh. I sure as I sure shit did. Yeah. 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 And you just because you thought he was funny? Okay, someone, <laughs> Let's someone be follow Friday to us in the same chunk. Mm-hmm. I clicked around. I was single. He was really cute, really funny. And we did like at reply flirtation until it turned into DMs, which turned into texts. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out great. Yeah. You guys got married a I couple months him, ago. Yes, we got married a couple months ago. For our anniversary, I made him post-its of like his most flirtatious tweets at me. Oh. Do you have any big theories or philosophies about dating? Ooh, um, you got to do it. (laughs) That's one philosophy. It's kind of a numbers game. Like, I learned to go on a bazillion dates that Mm -hmm. I hated. I'm kind of a careerist, Mm -hmm. and I treated it a lot like, well, this is what I would do to advance my career. Okay. I would go on meetings. I would take jobs that I'm not obsessed with. Right, I would, you know, I, I was building something. 
But it's like the num, you know, just the numbers are not necessarily there. So like we're not like you know swimming in a sea of gay men. So you know, I ended up having to literally you know get on a flight for my first date. But it was worth it. All right, so we have our dater here, Scott. Can you introduce yourself? Hi. My name is Scott Flannery, and I am 34, and I've been single my whole life. Help me out. Uh, Scott, we will. Yes. Should, do, are the listeners going to get to see Scott? They should be able to. If yeah. we had, like, scott vision on this podcast, <laughs> they would see a really hot guy. A really hot guy. <laughs> like, That's a really fucking hot saying. guy. <laughs> like, His teeth are perfect. You. His nose is perfect. Very handsome. Very handsome. Beautiful beard. He's blushing, so he has like some humility. <laughs> That's cute. Oh my god, you're so cute. Yeah, like I, the listeners should know that Scott is really hot. Yeah, really hot. <laughs> well, they do Why know he's really hot. Why are you both really not taxing me out? <laughs> he's a television star. You want to tell oh, us god. about that? Uh, I recently won the Amazing Race. Whoa! <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's amazing. <laughs> it's the amazing race. It Wait is a amazing. second. That is unbelievable to me. Okay. Cool. Okay. Now I'm going to so, watch the whole season. Yeah. He won. What did you win? I won half a million dollars. Fuck this. Why are you single? This is That's gross. crazy. <laughs> Yeah, it, you're cute, man. You're, you're really, just really, hot. really hot. That's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> thank, like you're handsome. Thank you. <laughs> handsome and hot. Yeah. Wait, are you like five foot two or something? No, I'm six foot one. Fuck! Jesus Christ! <laughs> stop. Scott, stop it. Okay, what is going on here? This may be our toughest challenge yet. Okay, we're gonna look at your settings first. So you are in Seattle. All right, age range. You're 34, you put 30 to 44. Any reason mm. for that? Yes. I feel like I exclusively date 28 year olds. Ooh. And it doesn't matter what age I am, it's always 28. Once in a while, a 26 is thrown in there. And I don't know if this makes me an ageist, but I feel like every time I'm burned or ghosted, it's by a 28-year-old who can't tell me his true emotions. Yeah, I was maybe the worst, worst version of myself for sure. At 28. 28, yeah, like the end of my 20s, yeah. real dark. Oh, yeah, real yeah. bad, real bad. Yeah. Whiskey Jane. Whiskey Jane. <laughs> <laughs> That's something she sounds me. fun. <laughs> <laughs> she was not fun. Not she was fun. crying. Yeah. Just lots of crying. Okay, so let's look at his well, profile. first of all, this is a very cute picture. Uh, Scott, 34, Harvard fucking University. Huge. Uh, Huge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm a kind, charming ambivert who balances my career and personal lives well. I love game nights, escape rooms, coffee, CrossFit, yoga, hiking, and travel. I think escape rooms is a little too high on the list. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, let's save that one. That's just like it does seem like one of I the first love dates. Game nights, trapping you in a cement walled torture chamber. Um, coffee, CrossFit. Oh my! <laughs> All right, Scott. <clears throat> let's get into it. What's going on, man? So you want a relationship? What's your theory? Uh, I don't know. I I keep. Going between either having really high standards or just going for it and then getting burned in the end mm -hmm. by getting ghosted, most specifically. Um, I've gone on five first dates in Seattle. Um, only one of those became a second date. And then um, the one I liked the most actually ghosted me after the first date. Why do you think that is? Do you... Can you pinpoint something where it's like you said something that was putting it on too thick? Or... Yeah, I think in the past I was a little bit more specific in that I was looking for a long-term relationship. And I think that's sort of ingrained in my head where I'm like, okay, do you like to do X, Y, Z? Are you this type of personality? Are you looking for a relationship rather than a hookup? And if I don't source those three things in the first date to an agreeable answer for me, then, then you know, I'm not interested. 
Or if you do match all those, then I guess I really pour it on and I show real interest. And maybe I come across as too intense. So we started swiping and literally every time we swiped right on someone, it was a match. He's Great. new to Seattle, so that's okay, so cool. You, you guys can have that in common. That. Great. <gasps> it's a match. It's a match. Okay. It's a match. <laughs> are you not saying yes to a lot of people? Because I bet a lot of people are saying yes to you. Is the yeah? Thing. You're probably like I've, everyone's just like right swipe on you. Because this is two for two now. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have never seen anything like it. Okay, so I get to send a message. <laughs> yeah. Um. Holy shit. <laughs> hey man, let's grab a drink or coffee. Great, send. We're doing it. Wow, you just asked him out in the first text. Yep, it's a numbers game. There's no need to hear more swiping because this is pretty much how it went the entire time. Clearly, getting matches isn't Scott's problem. We were stumped. Man, I cannot tell what the problem is I don't here. either. I don't know either. I don't know either. I think, I don't know. I wonder if there's a way for you to go into your first dates telling yourself that you've been in several long-term relationships. Because I bet you're freaking yourself out so much. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, it's just been so much time. You must be so in your head about it. Mm-hmm. I think I am. Yeah, and I bet you're, I bet the stakes are so high to you for every date because the time has been so long. I wonder if there's a way for you to fake your way into some sort of chillness about it. I wonder if you're send, putting out the vibe like I'm freaking out right now without even knowing it. I wonder if it's subconscious because I always fear that I'm doing it wrong because as gay men, we don't have like the social construct to, to teach us how to date. And so I approach dating like a straight couple would, I think, and that I would go pursue the man, even though I'm also a man, but I just perceive myself with more masculine energy. But by being gay and dating other men, you're already not conforming with those gender stereotypes. So give yourself permission to just not have to live up to the idea of being a man. You're already like, by a lot of people's definitions, quote unquote, not being a man, right? So you, you can, can throw shit up. like that out the window. You can yeah, make it up. Totally. You can make it up. I think also like you need to up your numbers. Swipe right more. Go on more dates. Smell them. Smell them. Get next to them. Smell them. I always kiss guys I didn't even like. Me I just too. I kiss everyone. Always kiss. That was why I asked sure. that. Yeah, just to make sure. Just to make sure. Yeah. Because sometimes you kiss. You and always then you're like, kiss. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> like on, I would be on a date when and like, because you kind of know in like two minutes if you're like, mm-hmm. you know, nah. You're that guy. <laughs> I do. I am that guy. I had that already in Seattle. He like went for it and stuck his tongue in my mouth, which was fine because he was cute and I had a great date. I asked him out for a second one. And he was like, oh, I'm not interested. Oh, my God. I am that guy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Why? I don't get that. Because <laughs> you want to try. Well, OK, you don't try enough. I might try too much. <laughs> I'm the sure middle. there's a happy medium somewhere, but you got to try. Do you have gay friends? I did not for the longest time. Yeah, I've made a conscious effort to focus on building my gay community in Seattle. It's great to have community, first of all, duh. People that you have stuff in common with, but also um, just on in a dating context, like these are people who would know you really well and then also like know other gay guys in, in the city who could set you up. I mean, there's a lot of friends who end up as boyfriends too. And in the meantime, let yourself off the hook. You're not weird for not have not having a boyfriend. Like that's not a big deal. And just like chill, just chill. You're so hot, you're so nice. You've been doing other things besides having a Which boyfriend. Which is great. Like people don't even do great. that. Yeah, you're, you're good. You're killing it. I wish I was you. I love oh, you. Oh, thank you all. I love you, <laughs> oh, I'm in love you with so you. Much. I wish I was a boy. <laughs> After the break, we follow Scott on two dates, and it's going to be amazing. Oh, yes, yeah, gonna get a date. Yes! We tied. So we tied. I'll tell you. Did you see that beautiful rim shot? You missed it. That's coming up after the break. It went in, came out, circled around. This episode of DTR is brought to you by Hawthorne Cologne. Hawthorne knows that not everyone is an expert when it comes to buying fragrances. 
Um, it asks me for my name. It says, pleased to meet you. First, how well do you know your fragrances? I'm going to go with Clueless. That's Gimlet Creative associate producer Jorge Estrada, who sat down to take Hawthorne's cologne questionnaire, which uses body chemistry and lifestyle data to deliver tailored scents. What's your drink of choice? Uh, I'm a fan of a nice cold beer. 75% of taste is aroma, which Hawthorne takes into account when matching you with one scent for work and one scent for play. Okay, cool. So I just took it. Um, wow, nailed me. So they suggested one bottle that's for work, um, that's citrusy and woody. And for play, they suggested a woody and fresh scent. It doesn't look like either one of these are anything that my dad would wear, so that's great. Um, it's definitely a plus. Discover your scent today by going to hawthorne.co and use code DTR to get 15% off your purchase. That's hawthorne with an E dot CO and use code DTR to get 15% off your purchase. Welcome back. So after the conversation with me and Gabe, this was what we came up with for Scott as far as a game plan goes. One, we wanted Scott to up his numbers. So just keep swiping right and that will happen automatically. Two, we challenged him to kiss on the first date. Three, we wanted him to scope out the gay community in Seattle. And four, we just want him to chill out. Let's see if he follows through. We're here in Seattle, ready to follow Scott on date number one with Justin. Justin is 32. He's got scruffy black hair with a perfect part down the side. His profile says he loves traveling and craft beers. And like three of his six photos, he's wearing a red flannel shirt. And right away, Scott was following our advice. I asked him out in the very first text. <laughs> I think my line was, hi, I like your scruff. You should show it to me in real life over drinks or something like that. <laughs> Get it, Scott. So the date begins. How's it going? Good, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. They chose to meet up at a craft beer bar that also has indoor mini golf. They talked about Seattle neighborhoods, politics, where they went to college flannel, granola, and finally, it was their turn for a little putt-putt. All right, you, well, you keep scoring. All right. It's all you. You get to go first. Yeah, well, I mean, you have some strokes. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> that is what he said. Want to know what else he said? Oh, yes, get it, get it. Yes! We tied. So we tied. I'll tell you. Did you see that beautiful rim shot? You missed it. Right. It went in, came out, circled around. I saw what? Why are you setting me up? They were getting along fine, and so Scott and Justin decide to keep going. Scott suggests a local gay bar, something we had urged him to do. Good job, Scott. They get to the bar, take a few neon green jello shots, ugh, and right away the conversation got personal about topics that Scott doesn't usually get into on a first date. Here's Scott. So when, what are you looking for in a relationship? Someone who can challenge me, someone who is willing to make themselves vulnerable, Oh, that's a big one. I haven't heard that one before. Yeah, like, I have nothing to lose. Like, for me, being as open as possible, if I am as authentic as I can be, then it is what it is. I have been taught from an early age to be very guarded and really, really be hyper aware of my actions. I'm loving everything that you're saying because this is exactly the root of what I'm learning right now, I guess. It's because my role models are all these people who have healthy, straight relationships. And something that I've recently learned about myself is that I model my potential relationships after those. Those heteronormative yeah, relationships. And exactly. And I think, I know I'm, you know, what, 34 now, that'll be 35. And I'm just now learning that I don't have to live by the heteronormative reality. I get to live by the reality that's right for me. And that's liberation. All right. All right. We got in deep tonight. <laughs> that's what he said. After that, they ate some fried Oreos. This bar sounds more like the county fair than a bar, which is great. Anyway, fried Oreos down the hatch, and it was time to say goodbye. So for us, this is the end? <laughs> yes! <laughs> well, it was nice meeting you. It's nice to meet you, too. Mm. No, I'm fine, for real. I have fun, too. 
Oh, you have you have my my turn. <laughs> hey, thanks for the conversation tonight. It meant a lot. Yeah, of course. It's very helpful. Did you guys hear that? They kissed. We did it. The podcast ends here. Just kidding. Here's Scott at the end of the date. I came into this not knowing, quote unquote, what my issue was, right? And I get kind of assessed by two people, Jane Marie and Gabe, and they're like, this might be something you need to think about. I, try, I reframe my, um, my date that I had tonight with that, and then the actual date comments on the exact issue that was discussed. And it's like, oh my God, this is the universe telling me something. That issue being? The issue being, like, I need to be my authentic self. For date number two, Scott planned an outing befitting a reality show contestant, a multi-stop scavenger hunt through downtown Seattle. This man loves activities. And his date was with a guy whose name is, wait for it, also Justin. Relevant details about Justin the second? He's sporty. He's lived in Seattle for 12 years. He also once tried out for a reality TV show but didn't make the cut. And here's what he thinks about going on a 10 a.m. scavenger hunt for a first date with someone who wins scavenger hunts on national TV. I mean, I'm, I, I'll, I'll see if I can keep up, but uh, I'm curious. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a tad early. I'll, I have, I've had some coffee, but not, 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 probably not enough. How's it going? How's it going? Good, nice to meet you. Good to see you. I'm Scott. Justin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You look great. Thank you, you too. And then they got right down so to it. Scott perfect. starts it off. Okay. Okay, would you like to read it? Sure. We have 19 questions. Oh, wow. All right, from uh, the corner of Harrison Street and Fifth Avenue, Fall Harrison to... The hunt takes them through downtown Seattle. They had to do a math equation involving public art, take pictures with monuments, all kinds of wacky shit. <laughs> oh my God, you all says this is your final quest challenge. <clears throat> Question 19, this is your final quest challenge. Return to University Street and cross the street to the garden. A few hours later, Scott and Justin number two make it to their final quest, which involved going to a monument and doing a crossword puzzle. If someone asked me to do that on a date, I'd be like, no, I don't want to. But this isn't my date. These two were having a great time. <laughs> this, this is awesome. I had a great time. I like that, look at that smile. <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm impressed. <laughs> Good. Scott even sounds a little smitten. Well, do you mind if I get your phone number? Of course you may. I'll, I'll text you. Okay. So what happens from here? We say goodbye. Oh, uh, okay. What was it? What was actually really nice. Had a good time. I did too. Yeah. He's kissing Justin number two, you guys. <laughs> get back to that later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, Scott debriefed with our producer. Oh, that three kisses at the end? Six. Six kisses? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, write that date. That was that was that was like a a nine. Jesus. An eight nine. Eight. I'm gonna give it some room to grow. He like held his own in my you know quirkiness of wanting to do something like this. He was like engaged. I don't know, like when I think about like a successful first date, that was a successful first date for sure. The only thing that could have made it better is if there were seven kisses. Okay, a few weeks later, we got Scott back in the studio to tell me and Gabe how it went. Did he take our advice? Justin, number one, he's very thoughtful. Um, we had this really deep discussion about authenticity and vulnerability which were things that we sort of touched on when you you and I spoke um, in our first interview. So I learned something from Justin one, and I appreciated his time very much. Justin two is super sexy, adventurous, and I want you both to know I took your advice and I kissed both of them on the first date. Yes. Nice. And I could tell a difference, meaning there was like cool friend vibes with the first Justin and hey, you wanna go out again with second Justin? Uh. <laughs> Spoiler alert. So you like Justin 2 better than Justin 1. Yes. Um, wh why do you think that is? Do you think it was like your date was more like in your comfort zone? What the activity was more your style? 
I think it kind of chilled me out to have an active date because there was stimulation coming from everywhere and I didn't have to focus on the pressure of it being date number one. And the date lasted pretty much three and a half, four hours. So at the end of that, I got a better sense as to what I truly felt for him, which was intense attraction and a, and a want to go out again, which we went out again two hours after that. What? Whoa. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> two hours? <laughs> what did you guys do when you hung out without the producers? Um, so no, so I actually had friends from, from out of town and I, and I was hanging out with them and texting Justin for like, the whole two hours we were away from each other. And then I said, well, mm. I mean, we're about to play pool. My friends and I, would you like to be my partner? And he's like, absolutely. And he Aww. he met us down at the pool hall where we were at. And we played pool for like an hour and a half with my friends. I just had to go for it. And and that's a big step for me to ask for the phone number and, and ask for the second date on the first date. So I was proud of myself. Oh, I, I just got butterflies when you were talking about the texting in between because those are like the best moments of your life, basically, <laughs> when you realize you have a mutual crush on someone and you're both like, I can't wait to see you again. I can't wait to see you again. I can't wait to see you again. When am I going to see you? You know, those right. <laughs> those interactions are... I, I ugh. And have you seen him since? Yeah. So after that day, we texted um, pretty regularly. So I took him out to a fine dining restaurant Sunday night. And uh, we have another date scheduled this weekend. Oh, my God. (laughs) Has this experience with him um, shed any light for you on, like, why you've been single so long? No, there's a part of me that feels like I've been doing it right. I've just been doing it my own way and thinking it was wrong. So, for example, taking him out to the restaurant you know, I just I told him I was like, I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to take you and it's going to be my treat, which is a very, I would say, heteronormative way of a guy picking up a girl. Right. And that's the way I've been, quote unquote, taught. And he liked that. He didn't see anything wrong with it. And he actually reciprocated by saying, well, thank you for for treating me tonight. And so I want to treat you next time. What do you hope happens? I actually scare myself a little bit because I instantly go in my mind to like, is he the one? And the purpose of dating is, is is dating, right? I'm trying to train myself. Dating is no longer a means to an end, which is the way I thought it was when I was growing up. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm at right now. What I'm excited to experience is that, um, that give and take of a relationship. Like, what is it like to support somebody in their life? Like, in their in their goals or in their experiences. An example is this. I actually, big news, just bought a house this week, but Justin knew I was going to put a bid in and he also knew when I won the bid, he was texting me and saying, this is great, you're gonna have a place to call your own. So he's being super supportive and it was just like a peek into what a relationship could be. Like someone who's excited about your success and what i'm excited to see is what does that look like in the long term and when life challenges come up we can we me and justin or me and someone else can grow together and that's super exciting for me because that means i'm going to be a, a better person in the long run that is so sweet I'm like that is really sweet. <laughs> she's she's actually oh crying <laughs> 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 just such a nice yeah because it is a really nice thing to look forward to and experience and i'm really glad that you got you're you're seeing it um as a possibility having never experienced that and i'm just thinking about you like yeah having this happen for the first time and just how good it does feel to have someone care about care about you it feels like you want to be in a relationship because you have all this love to give away or something and then Here's this other guy who's meeting you halfway, you know? Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's a great sign. Yep. It was just nice to see he knows that I'm I'm learning this. I'm taking my first steps and I'm excited about it. Because I think there is a stigma associated with a 34-year-old who has never had a relationship. You know, what's wrong with you? And I think he's trying to show that he's okay with that and, and going along for the ride. Ah, so I do have a heart. Interesting. What made me so emotional talking to Scott 
was thinking about that super sweet text message he got from Justin about his new house. I spent half my life not getting that text. Don't get me wrong, I was in relationships, but those little reminders that just say, hey, I'm rooting for you, I'm thinking about you. For a lot of us, that is the relationship. Feeling truly cared for for the first time, whether you're 34 and never had a boyfriend, or you're 39 and have had more than you'd like to admit, it's a stunning feeling when it happens. And if you're going, what is this lady even talking about? I get that text every day. Then congratulations. There's one thing I've learned about this season, talking to all these people about dating, about their issues, about past loves of their lives and heartbreaks and what they want for the future, is that you all need to give yourself a break. Be kinder to yourself. This shit is hard and scary and unpredictable. In the end, I think what helped Scott most was to reframe his situation. He's not some loser who's never had a boyfriend. He's someone who's been dating casually for a really long time. He's not picky, just patient. He's not lonely. He's surrounded by people who want to be with him. Sometimes we get stuck in the story we tell ourselves about ourselves. I'm the mean girl, or I'm too stubborn, or I have trust issues. Are you sure? Do other people see you that way, or are you just being hard on yourself? Maybe try out a different you and see what happens. DTR is a branded podcast from Tinder and Gimlet Creative. This episode was produced by me, Jane Marie, Julia Botero, Garrett Crow, Caitlin Boguki, and Matt Schultz, with help from Casey Martin and Ben Kiebrick. Nicole Wong is our senior producer. Nazanin Rafsanjani is our creative director. Zach Schmidt and Katherine Anderson mix this episode. Additional production by Little Everywhere. Special thanks to Victoria Barner, James Cabrera, and Princess Harlow. This is the season finale of DTR. No! Thank you so much for sharing your feedback, your reviews, your stories. We've had so much fun this season. Stay in touch. I'm on Twitter at Marie. That's S-E-E, Jane Marie. And you can follow Gimlet Creative at Gimlet Creative and Tinder at Tinder. I'm Jane Marie. Thanks for listening. Bye. Okay. Whoa. Hot. Um, <laughs> sweaty Scott doing back squats at a sort of a CrossFit gym. Um, you've got longer hair. I'm biting my fingernails right now. This is like <laughs> Jane really likes this one. I really like this one. <laughs> and oh, we're getting a thumbs up from Julia too. Okay.